The technology for managing type 1 diabetes is incredible and getting better by the day. Obviously, it hasn't always been like this. Let's take a quick look at the history of the disease and how we got to where we are today. In 1910, Sir Edward Albert discovered what would become known as insulin, and in 1916, it was understood that this was the cause of a fatal disease that would be named diabetes. This was really the beginning of diabetes care, and it moves very quickly from then until present day. In 1921, Dr. Frederick Banting was able to extract and purify insulin from dogs that could then be used in humans. Diabetes was officially no longer considered fatal, and in 1923, insulin was being commercially produced. In 1949, the first insulin syringe was released, making for much easier at-home care, and in 1964, color-coded blood glucose strips were released, making at-home blood glucose testing a reality. Soon after, the first blood glucose meter was introduced. In 1982, insulin produced from bacteria is approved by the FDA, making care significantly cheaper. In 1989, the first glucose sensing device is invented, and in 1996, Lizpro insulin is introduced. It is the first commercially available fast-acting insulin. By 2001, the insulin pump has been invented, and in 2006, an algorithm for the treatment of diabetes is released and pumps are widely used. By the late 2000s, the first continuous glucose monitor becomes FDA approved and available. And in the years since, we have seen the biggest leaps yet. Google said this week that it's testing a smart contact lens that can help people manage diabetes, which affects almost 400 million people across the world. So it's no wonder people took notice when Google announced this lens, which can track your glucose through your tears. There's a tiny chip embedded on the lens that, if it works correctly, could eliminate the inconvenience and the pain involved in diabetes management. But Google's not the only one working on this type of technology. A team from Sweden designed a lens that has a fuel cell that can not only monitor glucose, but actually create small amounts of power. The smart contact is very cool, but not nearly as impactful as some other advances. Today we have the pump and continuous glucose monitor, but the user still has to interpret the data and treat accordingly. An exciting development is the artificial pancreas, which fills in the gaps between these technologies and takes the diabetic almost completely out of the equation. So the way we've done artificial pancreas studies here, we're using our algorithm is based on um, fuzzy logic, which applies to technology that is used in medical equipment, flying airplanes, cameras, and a lot of different equipment uses fuzzy logic. And it was developed by Boeing engineers, our um, algorithm was. And as the blood sugar goes up, if the rate is faster, there's more dosing. If it's a slower rate, there's less dosing. And um, so it responds to what your blood sugar changes. Uh, I think for a lot of people with di type 1 diabetes that having a computer do this for them will make their diabetes control much better because they're not going to test their blood sugar every, every hour and, and dose, right? I mean, if you have a pump, you, you have the ability to, but are you going to test your blood sugar or are you going to look at, a, a, at your sensor and do that every hour? Probably not. So I think it would be easier for people to manage their diabetes if they have artificial pancreas, which includes the pump, the sensor, and um, the computer algorithm that drives the dosing. These are just a few of the technologies that continue to promise an easier life for diabetics. Even if an actual cure is a ways away, technologies like these will be the next best thing.